Hi guys! This is the very first Chronic Illness Cat vlog or video log for those of you who are new to the sort of YouTube world that's generating around us. I'm new to it too. I learned mostly about vlogging through my daughter Sophie's Minecraft obsession. Um, and so I thought it would be a really, really cool idea to bring you videos each week discussing items that are significant to us as people who enjoy chronic illness cat, uh, people with chronic illness, people who want to learn about chronic illness, and especially the carers who help look after us. Um, because I think they, they need a, a lot of support and a lot of help, and they often don't know how to ask for the help or the support. So this is the first one. I'm really nervous and I'm really shaky, and you can tell my face is super red, and I think I'm about to start flaring. Um, so today is not the best day to start, but yesterday, oh my gosh, thank you so much, we hit 10,000 likers on Facebook. That's surreal. Um, so I thought, why not start with a very basic introduction into Chronic Illness Cat? What is a meme? What's a macro? And why do we do this? Okay, so first, Chronic Illness Cat is a meme. So a meme is basically a static idea that can take on its own life through various repetitions of the images. You might have seen Velociraptor. He's a fantastic example. Um, or the why you know. I'm very fond of why you know. Why you know is often used in my house. Uh, I remember getting a, a fairly uh, viral why you know um, when I was using a, a Linux platform and I couldn't get any music sharing devices to work with it. So it was why you know brand name Linux. And, and it got, you know, sent off multiple times and it, and it was hilarious. Um, and that was kind of my first introduction into what a meme is. Um, there are people out there who call them memes. No, no, not a meme meme. Um, and once a meme is established, such as Chronic Illness Cat, every time you see an image we call those macros. Not because they're big, but because they're individual and they can be changed. We also call them images. I prefer to call them images rather than macros because macro is something I don't understand in Excel. So if someone would like to teach me about macros in Excel, that would be really cool. Um, Chronic Illness Cat was created by an incredibly articulate and interesting young person named Riley back in June 2011. I saw a Chronic Illness Cat image on a blog I was following um, and I thought, this is crazy. I can anonymously and sarcastically um, talk about my illness and, and I thought that was really great because at the time I was going through some, sorry, I'm just trying to make this play. I was going through some really intensely negative feelings about my illness. And that's probably something a lot of people can relate to. Um, intensely negative feelings about your illness, basically, it can creep up on you. You don't actually realize how bad you're feeling about yourself, apart from the illness, until it sneaks up on you and you feel really, really bad. And intensely negative feelings can, can come in a lot of different ways. You know, you may have less enjoyment of things you used to really enjoy. You don't really want to talk to people. You may not eat. You may overeat. You may not sleep. You may oversleep. Basically, intensely negative feelings is very, very common to depression. And it's basically just a form of low mood that's occurring because you're dealing with stuff. And so, yeah, you may be depressed. But you might also just be having some really bad feelings about the fact that your illness is ongoing. And that's a form of grief. And I didn't have a way to grieve my illness. My illness uh, came about after a very traumatic series of events in 2007. I've probably been sick my whole life. In fact, I know I've been sick my whole life. But it was a series of events in 2007 that left me in a flare that took away my ability to walk, to feed myself, to go to the toilet by myself. 
Um, I was put onto prednisone. I'm still on prednisone. I have this gorgeous moon face. Lovely. It's going away a bit, but it's still there. Um, and basically, by the time it got to 2011, I was I wasn't the same person. The 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 before illness me was gone. She was gone, long gone. The dreams I had had, long gone, never coming back. The future was scary. I had people telling me that because we didn't know it was making me ill, I had a five year life expectancy. Uh, and when they told me that in 2007, I thought, okay, five years, of course we're going to figure this out. Who's not going to be able to figure this out in five years? So by the time we got to June 2011, I had about six months left in my mind. You know, the mind of hitting 2012, oh my God, I'm going to die. And it was a really low, dark, black, horrible abyss of grief and anger and it's hard it's hard to put into words what that feels like sadness I didn't want this to be my life I didn't want my life to end why could no one figure this out um, I had had doctors been fired by doctors because it was too hard I had fired doctors because they were jerks um, I just didn't know what to do. I was floundering. I was lost. You know, I'd been to talk therapists. I had tried a, a, a total apothecary of uh, antidepressants and mood stimulants and mood depressives. And, you know, I just had this feeling that everything was stuck in here. And I couldn't get it out because I couldn't put a, a voice to it. And imagine my surprise when that voice came from a cross-eyed Siamese on a gradiented blue background. And I felt empowered. It was crazy. I could put my feelings out there in a non-identifying way. And other people were going, oh my god, me too. And I suddenly thought, wow you feel this too? You mean you haven't been diagnosed? What do you mean you haven't been diagnosed? You've been doing this longer than I have. And and it, it was shocking. And so I started to make like a lot of images. And I put them on my Blogspot blog. And I don't know, maybe two or three days later, I got an email saying my blog had been taken down because it had, you know, breached the the allocated free broadband, blah, 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 blah. And I couldn't believe because it had been shared so many times. And I thought, wow, that's crazy. So I actually had to go in and delete quite a few posts so that people would stop hot linking um, and I could, you know, retain my service. Um, and I finally felt, you know what, this is a shared experience. But not many people know it's a shared experience. It's it's something that's happening to me, and it's happening to you, and it's happening to a person I kind of know, but we don't talk about it. We don't talk about how hurt we feel, or how disempowered we feel, or how empowered we feel. We don't talk at all. Because, you know, aren't you supposed to be okay? Aren't you supposed to be normal? Isn't this all in your head? So if you're impacted by it, well, obviously, it's because you're not doing well in the head. Um, and I thought, you know what, this is such an isolating experience. And I've been isolated for so long. And I don't know what to do with myself anymore. I'm going to put this on Facebook. And I had this thought that, you know, because the images had been super popular, on a couple blog posts that instantly it was going to be like, you know, this active, vibrant community. So I think I got brave enough in September 2011 to open the Facebook page. I had tried to get into contact with Riley through Tumblr, but I wasn't a Tumblr user, so it was probably anonymous. 
Um, I tried looking for email addresses or anything I could, and I never had any word from Riley, so I was terrified. I was so worried that she would come and say, you can't do this, you've stolen this. But I felt so isolated, and I felt so alone, and I felt just so desperate. It, it truly was, to the bone, desperate to connect with someone, anyone, who knew what it was like that that I did it. And to be honest, for about six months, there were three likers, and I was the first liker. Uh, a second was a girl I don't know but played games with on Facebook, and the third, I don't even know how she found us, but I was so grateful for her like. Um, and here we are now in November 2014, having just hit 10,000. I'm sure we would have hit 10,000 a lot sooner if not for Facebook's constant attempts to uh, reduce our visibility, which is a, an issue I need to talk to you guys about. But uh, I'm super grateful and I'm super thankful that you're all here and I am so thankful and grateful for all the comments and the wonderful discussions and the, the friendship that blossoms. But I am also so grateful for everyone who takes the time to send a message in saying, I thought I was alone, but I'm not alone anymore. And that was always the point. The, the point of the page wasn't kudos or immense popularity or anything like that. I just wanted to provide a safe place where someone could say, you know what? Today sucks. I hate life. I'll be optimistic about the future later because today is sucking and I need to not be alone right now. And, and that was the whole purpose and that was the whole point. And I think it is so amazing that we were able to, to do this through the use of a Siamese cat on a blue background. It boggles my mind. It makes me so happy. I can't even put into words the whirlwind ride. Even though it's been three years, it... It just feels like such fun, and I am so lucky that I get to do something so fun every day. Um, I do worry that this is the end of Chronic Illness Cat on Facebook. I think Facebook has some major plans put in place to completely rid communities based around meme images. I don't think they get memes, even though Mark Zuckerberg himself is a young guy and probably totally gets it. When he relinquished control to his shareholders, we're all going to lose out. And the only way that you, you can fix that is by voicing your dislike, your displeasure. You agree to the terms of, of use. You agree to all of the sometimes quirky and weird privacy stuff they throw at you. So I think you have a reciprocal role by telling them what you actually want to see on the site and what your opinion is. And I think if enough people voice their opinion in pretty big places, they're not going to be able to continue in the way that, that they are. But unchallenged, they're going to win. And I don't like that. So in the coming year, because it is the end of November right now, you're going to see more on YouTube. You're going to see more on Tumblr. You're going to see, hopefully, a couple blogs that don't rely on WordPress. Uh, Twitter I will hopefully figure out eventually and and hopefully the other admin will get to be voices because at the moment with one account it's really difficult to try and sneak in uh, and not get banned by various platforms. So I am so grateful that you're here and that you're watching. Um, some basic trivia. The Siamese cat featured in the images, her name is Miss Muffin. And Miss Muffin lives in France. She's very fancy and we love her. Uh, Miss Muffin belongs to a photographer dude who took some amazing photos of her. One of them appeared on uh, the Wikipedia sort of fair use images, whether he knew that or not. Uh, she got put onto a gradient background, uploaded to the meme generator, and bam, seriously. So the first lesson that you can learn from Chronic Illness Cat is please put decent privacy measures on your photos because you don't want people like us making memes out of your animals unless you do, 
And if you do, hit me up, hit me up, email me, because we are looking for some gorgeous pugs at the moment, because this disappointed pug is going to be a thing. Um, my goals for Chronic Illness Cat, to be fair, are very small. I, uh, I, I want a website. I want to eventually have a safe forum where people can discuss uh, their diagnosis. Um, having a rare illness myself, what I know is needed are the voices of patients. It's one thing to Google a rare illness and get the same copied and pasted text on various uh, platforms and uh, supposed research studies, but in reality, what is going to help you most is the lived experience of a patient. And so for me, I know the validity and the value of my experience of living with a rare disease, um, but I, I think there is also a validity and usefulness in your lived experience of your illness because as much as doctors want to think that symptom pictures are very static, they're not. And what I experience as a fibro patient is going to be different to your experience as a fibro patient. And it's all going to be complicated by my rare illness. So unless we speak about it, and unless we make a really considered approach to sharing our diagnosis, um, I don't think doctors are going to have a chance to learn. And that's really what I want to provide is a platform for you to say this is my lived experience, this is how I am feeling about my diagnosis roller coaster or my now undiagnosis, this is what I'm thinking about my referral tag. When that's when you get basically chucked out and you go from one specialist to another and sometimes they'll even refer you back and forth so that's called referral tag I play that game all the time I hate it I don't think doctors know how emotionally draining it is um, I know that we have quite a few uh, closeted professionals in the chronic illness cat community who turn up every day to learn from patients and I am so grateful for that. Thank you for wanting to know more about illness and wanting to know more about your patients um, and, and hopefully taking our experiences and putting that into your practice. That's, that's what I want for Chronic Illness Cat. I want to bring a smile to your face. I want to have you nod your head maybe in sad disagreement. I don't want it to be a place where positivity has to remain the flavor of the day. It's a non-religious experience um, and that's what I really like about it is that we don't focus on a single illness, we don't focus on religion, we don't focus on positivity, we accept people for who they are and what they're experiencing and I think that's the beauty of the community. I know we're a niche community. I know that we will never have millions of happy, satisfied kitties because we actually offend people on a daily basis. It's crazy. Um, but I'm okay with the niche community and I'm okay with you. And if you're okay with me, we've got something good going on. And I, I can't even put it into words. Chronic illness cat is to some people such a silly concept. But it's abstract enough that you and I can relate, you know, millions of miles away, we can relate to one another. We don't share the same illness. We don't share the same circumstances. We may not even have anything in common in real life. But you and I share an experience. And that's really cool. And I think that's what takes away the isolation and the sadness and and it brings hope if a cross-eyed Siamese from France can be put together on a blue background by a girl in the States be picked up by an American expat living in New Zealand broadcast through Facebook Tumblr Twitter and blogs to you wherever you are and you and I feel a connection there's nothing better than that so I hope today you've learned something about Chronic Illness Cat. Her name is Miss Muffin. I'm Jen. 
I'm an expat living in New Zealand. I run a team of, I think we've got five admin, maybe? Sorry, guys. Um, and, yeah, chronic illness cat means a lot to me, as silly as some people think it is. 10,000 likers is an amazing achievement in three and a bit years boggles my mind and I just wanted to post a video telling you guys how grateful I am how overwhelmed with just love I feel right now um and it's gonna make me cry so thank you so much for coming every day and <laughs> laughing with us and rolling your eyes with us and being the best you with us because you know some days we all need that um, so if you have some spoons, click the like button when you, when you see an image, uh, put a smiley face. Every time you put something to one of our posts, Facebook likes us a bit more. Um, and if you've got some spare spoons, click like on this video click subscribe, and I will see you next time.